I think that no doubt there's not one answer for everything, not only if every teacher fits a school like that is the same thing for students that we don't know if all students fit a school like that. But I'm, I'm uh, and now I'm gonna show why. <laughs> when I came across Quest, Quest to Learn, searching for, for things in education, for me was an amazing uh, model. We are extremely happy, Brian came uh, to tell us about it. I think no doubt if you're talking about narrowing the gap, I think they did. They did not narrow the gap, they finished with the gap. That doesn't mean, again, is the answer for every child, but I think no doubt from every, everything I've seen around, Quest to Learn has, is there. I mean, Quest to Learn is not trying to get a game, make it really nice, it put into the educational system. They try to understand what's happening, they try to understand the language of the kids, they try to understand the way kids are learning and uh, develop a whole model based on that. So I think, for me, talking about our panel subject, no doubt, I think for us it's a, it's a, it's a model. Now, I'm gonna, uh, I work at Mindset, which is um, the newest uh, innovation center of Matar. So I don't wanna talk a lot, I think there's much more interesting people here, but they asked me to tell a little bit about uh, the work we are doing in Mindset to try to narrow the gap in and out of the classroom. Our main, uh, our challenge at Mindset is to keep kids amazed. Uh, this girl, I think, uh, shows exactly what we are trying to get at. Because we believe that we are losing, and uh, we are not pessimistic about it, I think, I think we are realistic. We are losing uh, the newest generation to much more relevant learning environments. Uh, so in order to keep the educational world relevant to kids, we must understand what's happening to kids. We must understand where kids are actually learning today, where kids are actually uh, finding the answers to their questions. Our hypothesis is that kids have, they in a way gave up to the traditional educational system that doesn't really talk the same language they do and they found a parallel learning system, and that gaming is, has an important role within this learning system. Uh, as I think Brian said, for us gaming today uh, within the kids' world is not only an entertainment activity, actually is fulfilling an important learning gap within the kids' world, world, and gaming has become an effective parallel path of education. So we decided to find out a little bit more uh, about this world. We decided to ask kids what something about their relation with gaming uh, in order to understand what's happening in their learning world. What, but for us, it was very difficult to do so because when we started reading about it, most of the studies that we came across were trying to ask kids, but they were always doing with an adult next to the kid. So what happens, we all, except Brian and the people that work uh, with him, we all have a sort of fear about the relation of gaming and the kids' world. We are all adults are a bit worried that kids spend actually too much time gaming. Um, so this negative connotation, we thought that when a kid is answering questions about gaming with an adult next to him, will significantly affect his responses. So uh, we try to put a call in some, um, in some uh, online platforms and try to get kids voluntarily to click, click and to answer to our questionnaire. So we did that, we put a call, a call in Hebrew and another one in Arabic and hope for the best. We were really, really lucky and after a week we had 5,500 kids that clicked and we had 1,019 kids that actually answered a two-page questionnaire in the beginning, everyone thought you were nuts. No kid is going to answer so much. Not only they answered, but uh, we were so lucky that they actually answered thinking about the answers. We had very, very, very little uh, percentage of kids that actually wrote uh, silly things, which is very normal in online surveys. Uh, most of the kids, here is the age range. We actually, there were some older, very few we took out from the sample. Most kids were from 8 to 13 years of age. 
uh, we had 765 Hebrew speakers and 255, 54 Arabic speakers. Most of the sample were boys, even though with the Arabic sample we have almost a 50-50. It's great. I chose only three answers um, to bring here today. This first was very interesting because most of the studies we've read talk that kids play maximum of two hours a day. And actually, surveys asking parents, that's exactly the same answer. And we all know kids. We, don't, we know this is not true. So for us, it was amazing that actually in our study, kids said, told us the real story that they, after they come from school, the question was actually asking, after you come from school, and they said that they play most of the time, what they do is that they are playing digital games. Um, only 3% of the Hebrew speakers said that they never played uh, for the last two days, and 18% 18, 18 of the Arabic speakers. And there was a very interesting question, I don't know if you can see down there. We asked kids if your parents control the amount of time you play, and twice as many girls said yes compared to boys. That's something society should think about. <laughs> Okay, are digital games good for you? 7% said yes, and we asked why. They said because we learn things. And the second answer was it is fun. And then, uh, for me this was, I mean, Ran and I, here he is, that we did the study, we spent hours reading the answers of 1,100 kids about this question. What do you learn when you play games? Uh, most kids talked about content learning. They said, they, I learned history, I learned English, I, I learned math. I learned things about the space, um, specific skills. I learned how to build. I, I learned craft. Uh, I think it's amazing the, qu the answers about thinking. They say that it helps me uh, problem solving. It helps me to, um, to build a strategy. There was a lot of, of answers about emotion as well. Uh, I brought this because um, I think this is a very, very inter interesting result. There's something that Jane McGonigal call blissful productivity, which is, she says that when we are playing games, game, games allow us to learn how to win and lose. She said that gamers are willing to work hard if they are given the right challenge, a challenge that matters, that is relevant, and not only that, when they fight to get that, they feel good about it. We had so many kids that said that in different ways. We brought just two examples. An 11-year-old boy that said, sometimes you lose and sometimes you win, and you learn not to be angry, but to try again. A 12-year-old girl that said, by playing, I learned to be calm, to focus on the target, and not to give up. What do you like most about video games? That actually reproduces what game designers told us, that the most important thing when they design a game is the story uh, or content. As you see, it's interesting the kill fighter shoot answer as well. Almost only boys said they like this part, which is also interesting. That's also a misconception, I think, a misconception that uh, we are already learning that it is not like that. Kids don't play by themselves, and you can see here. Actually, kids play with everything. They play by themselves, but they also play with their parents. They play with their brothers. They play with friends on the same computer at the same time. They play with friends that are on another computer, and they also play with people they don't know. For the very, very parents that are very scared, in our sample, only 18 children said that they play with um, other players they don't know, but only 3% only play with people they don't know who help also relatives and friends, uh, was interesting because as kids get older, they said they use less relatives and more web uh, search engines. This was an amazing result as well. Kids say that they learn how to navigate in the web because of games. They learn how to search uh, knowledge uh, and content in the web because of games. Uh, and that's the last one. Uh, for me, personally, it was a very exciting result. I truly believe Minecraft is an accidental pedagogical breakthrough. Accidental because the guy that uh, designed Minecraft had no intention of, uh, <laughs> of doing any pedagogical breakthrough, but I have, for me, I have no doubt it is. It is uh, it's the most popular game in Israel, according to this study. Uh, there are 
and you can see here that actually kids play very interesting uh, games, very engaging games, games that, that require the collaboration, that they, they require teamwork. Uh, Minecraft, for example, kids don't have any immediate reward. On the contrary, they get together with their friends to build things. They build teamwork to protect themselves from the monsters that come out at night. It's, it's, it's a, there's a lot of creativity, a lot of teamwork, a lot of feeling together. So, if we can conclude anything in order to make the educational world relevant to kids, what we have to do first is to understand kids' parallel learning environment. Thank you very much.